differences. Well, I get five minutes to speak as each. Whom do you recognize of me now? City resident or a parish resident? Both, Andy Ebert. Freedom of speech, open minds, process, and procedures. According to your charter, section 212, ordinances in general, all proposed ordinances shall be introduced in writing at a meeting of the council shall be confined to one subject expressed clearly in the title. Section B, all proposed ordinance shall, excuse me, shall be read by title. When introduced and published by title, except that ordinances proposing amendments to the charter shall be published in full. On July 10th, you introduced ordinance number 0-121-2018. It was published on July 13th. It had summarized a list of 18 amendments to the charter, eight amendments to the charter. In the whereas clause, it says, Desire to propose certain amendments affects changes to the above subjects fully sworn, fully sw shown on the text proposed in the Home Rule Charter Amendments. On August 7th, you introduced and finally published an ordinance on August 10th that summarized a list of 10 changes to the charter. That's not the ordinance that was introduced. That is a totally different ordinance, which I believe is a violation of your charter. And you admit it in your documents because it says disposition of the ordinance amended to substitute a revised ordinance and an amended version of the Home Rule Charter documents. Well, the charter clearly says you introduce it in writing and you didn't do that one you substituted a totally different ordinance. It says the notice of public hearing, this ordinance was published by title in the advertiser July 13th. Nope, not the one you passed. I believe you have a legal issue with this election you're going to have shortly. I just wanted you to be aware of it. In case someone out there wants to make this the laughing stock of this community, because they can. All they got to do is point out what I did. You made a big mistake. I told you. You didn't listen. Mr. Terrio, I took your advice. You said that the city is represented in all the new parish districts. Well, I figured it out. Three council members can be elected from the city of Scott in the new parish council districts. Three out of five rules. Two can be elected from the city of Broussard because they represent two of them. And you gerrymandered the city laughing in the two districts. I believe you have some issues to deal with. I would like five minutes to speak as a registered city resident on the issue of the election coming up because I have that right. I want to be treated equally. Will I get it? It's five minutes per the card. So you know the rule. You, 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 you've been here a so, number of times. So you don't recognize I two recognize separate individuals, here. two separate registered voters. Good. I'll see you a little later in the meeting then. Sure. Mr. S. Scott, with those comments that were made, would you like to inform us if we did something illegal or this council acted or this government went against the grain and uh, did something illegal that will uh, obviously 
caused us to go down in history is just tell me where I'm at for clarification purposes. I'm unaware of any illegal activity that you have performed. You introduced an ordinance. There is a process after introduction between introduction and final and even at it final that amendments can be offered prior to final adoption. I'm not exactly sure um, I understand Mr. Hebert's argument that there was some illegality done. Uh, the appropriate notices were published. Amendments are done to ordinances all the time prior to final and then final adoption is, occurs. Um, so if you were always to have to publish an ordinance, if an amendment were offered and go back through the introduction, you would never get to final on any ordinance that uh, experienced an amendment. Uh, you would be in a vicious cycle. So I'm not sure I quite understand what he's saying, but um, uh, you know, I hope that answers your question. <coughs> It does. Thank you. Next speaker. Dale Huff Power, followed by Kayla Powell. Good evening. My name is Dale Huff Power. I'm a resident of uh, District 9. The privilege of pastoring uh, Nouvelle Church of the Nazarene. Uh, privilege of working with Louisiana Family Forum and um, networking with many pastors, black, white, Hispanic. And I uh, just want to um, honor you and thank you for your service. Uh, Paul calls you uh, ministers of God in the book of Romans chapter 13. And so thank you for your service. I know these are a lot of emotional topics and not always easy. Um, but I rise to uh, support uh, the mayor. And um, his. I thought his uh, statement today was well thought out, reasoned. And uh, several of my pastor friends also wanted me to relay that to you and to the mayor president, particularly Pastor Jacob Baranza of Our Savior's Church, uh, that they uh, supported your statement. I, as a, as a follower of Christ, I desperately want to love the Lord with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I want to love my neighbor as myself. My own time with the Lord in the morning, as I often do, I will take a proverb from the First Testament. I believe it's still relevant in our lives. There's 31 proverbs, so there's 31 days, so tomorrow's the 22nd. And, then, and there's a verse in, in the 22nd chapter of Proverbs that talks about remove not the ancient boundaries. And as we debate things and talk about our stewardship, we all, I, will stand before God one day and give an account. You'll give an account for, for your stewardship. Um, I think that the most important opinion is his opinion. And to, I can't move the lines. I can only seek to follow those lines. And I believe the Lord blesses us as a society um, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And so I believe the Lord will honor um, as we endeavor to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, love our neighbor as ourself, um, and seek his truth. He says, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And uh, I, I just honor you for your service, and I want you to know that we love you, we're praying for you, and we stand with you. Kayla Powell, followed by Barbara Connor. Hello, my name is Kayla Powell. Um, I just want to start by saying that I'm a high school teacher. So normally at this time of night, I'm either working on lesson plans or trying to get to bed early so I can wake up at 4.30. Um, so this is really important to me. And our, the reason why I stayed is to talk about the drag queen story time. Um, I just want to say, um, as an educator, that students are not read to enough. I know this because I teach high school, and it's heartbreaking the amount of students that I interact with on a daily basis who do not know how to read. I believe that in order for our students to be good readers, it's very important at a young age that they are read to. And whether it means that um, their parents read to them at night or they can hitch a ride with a neighbor to go hear a drag queen read to them, it's important no matter what. 
kudos to the drag queens who want to go and volunteer their time to our community and also to the parents who are willing to instill the importance of reading to their children. Um, as adults, we are role models and we must be the ones to first love and accept other people if we want our children to grow up and do the same. So we have to actually start with ourselves and we have to love and accept people. It's important to teach our students this. Like many people have said before, um, there are too many teen suicides. There's actually a young man um, in the area where I teach who committed suicide at the age of 12 because he was bullied for being different, for being gay. And as an educator, I try to do everything that I can do, but I am not society. I am not there when they go home. I'm not there on social media. And I'm not there, you know, even all the time at school when they're around peers. So I just want to say that I stayed here tonight just to reiterate the importance of teaching our students love and acceptance, that we as an adult need to do the same thing Shame on you if you are a poor role model to these students because that is not what they need at all. They need positivity and they need positive role models who will show them, not just tell them how to live a happy and successful life where they love and accept people who are different than them. Um, so like many people have said tonight, if you don't agree with the drag queen story time, it's perfectly okay for you to not participate. Okay, I'm gonna go work on those lesson plans. All right, thank you. Barbara Connor, followed by the final speaker, Bonnie Barbier. Good evening. Thank you all for being here. Such a giving of your time and your attention. My name is Barbara Connor. I know some of you. Uh, I have had the pleasure of living in Lafayette for about 25 years, and I would like to speak to the young people. I noticed I'm actually older than Mrs. St. Julian. I didn't know that. <laughs> and, and I would like to give some heartfelt warmth to the young people who are doing this daring thing of coming out to the City Parish Council to speak and to listen and to participate in government. And I would also like to commend the library at stirring things up. My goodness, they've done a good job, haven't they? I haven't seen this place so crowded in years. I really haven't. And uh, I'm delighted. And I want to speak in a controversial way. I would like to emphasize my own personal uh, uh, preference for literacy. And I would like to encourage everyone to do what they can in that direct direction. So let's see, how much time do I have? All right, I have had the pleasure of participating in several institutions in this city. I was a teacher at the university for a good number of years, and uh, one of the topics I taught was critical thinking. Oh my. And I also taught some uh, uh, seminars in religion, which is a, an interesting combination. It actually is a wonderful combination because one thing I would talk about was the way St. Thomas Aquinas said that using Aristotle, that uh, the thing that distinguishes humans from all the other animals is the rationality which we have. And if we want to give up our rationality, then we make ourselves like the animals or the plants. And who would cut off an arm to deny that gift? We should use our thinking ability. And uh, so I, again, want to go out controversially and say uh, uh, I'm in favor of critical thinking. And this nice lady used to sign in some of my classes. She's wonderful. <laughs> um, I've also been a part of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, I actually was a chair for a while. And then, uh, let's see. 
Before that, before I moved to Lafayette in a parish you probably don't even know, I served for five years on the library board, which is one reason I'm so emphatic about libraries, because we had the wonderful Minnie Lou Lynch, who is now deceased, but the uh, blessed thing taught me a good bit about libraries. She traveled all over the state. She's one of the reasons we have a public library system, and uh, we, she would have certainly commended banned books and all those things. In fact, we had a special place near the checkout section of the different libraries in the parish for all the books that would be rapidly stolen by people who were trying to protect, protect their neighbors uh, from books that they thought were improper. And they really, they were not that wild by today's standards. Not at all. But you have to protect, they're, they're costly. Uh, so let's see, so libraries are a wonderful thing and I am so glad that these librarians have stirred up so much interest and I did hear in the overflow crowd, you don't even know how many, there were a hundred people in the hallway uh, listening to the uh, the young people from the library standing up for the importance of reading and of including everyone in the process of uh, the joy of reading. So I, I, I guess I'll just bow out with that. Thank you, and I want to commend the young people for their participation, and thank you all. Thank you. Bonnie Barbier. Hi. I'm Bonnie Barbier. Um, I am a proud lesbian and member of the queer community in Acadiana. I'm also a performer in uh, the Acadiana area, as you can tell. And um, sorry, not sorry for the glitter that I will leave behind my trail. <laughs> um, and I'm also a native of Lafayette. And one thing that I've always been very proud of is my community. And being from South Louisiana, we get a lot of hate, but I'm like, y'all, Lafayette's not like that. Lafayette is not like what you think. And whenever I first saw that we were going to have drag times, oh, I'm here to support drag time story hour. Um, whenever I first heard that we were going to have drag time story hour in Lafayette, I was super excited. I have friends with children who are very excited to take their children to this program. And then I saw the hate. Um, and one thing that I want to share is that just a couple months ago, dressed as a hermit crab, I read to the children in the community a house for hermit crab. I don't think that I confused any of the children <laughs> in the audience. Like, why is this girl a hermit crab, mom and dad? Am I gonna turn into a hermit crab? Oh my gosh. I don't know what to do. I don't think that happened. I also got a lot of applause. So I'm talking about the hypocrisy of me as a lesbian reading to children, which is so important because as a childcare provider, it's one of my favorite things to do. The, the, the non-judgmental minds of children, it's, it's beautiful. And so to see that these people want to volunteer their time to read to the children, and then there's so much hatred. But I also appreciate this hatred because it has shown me how amazing Lafayette is. Because honestly, through the hate, I've only seen love and support. And it's been incredible. And Lafayette is a progressive city, and I will not say otherwise because it is. And I appreciate having the time to talk about something like this because it opens people's minds that might not have a had a chance to open. I don't look like a lesbian. A lot of people don't know that I am. A lot of people don't realize I'm gay because I wear dresses and I'm not the stereotype. But it gets to open the dialogue that everybody's different. Just because you look one way doesn't mean you are. Just because you don't look one way doesn't mean you are. And we need to start this dialogue with our children at a young age. Again, if as a parent, you're not ready, you're not comfortable to start, you don't know the words to say to start that dialogue with your children, then don't start it, don't go. But I have several friends who are now saddened that this opportunity is gonna be taken from them because they wanted to bring their child to this story time. So I just ask that you think about this and, and think about how amazing it will be for the children. I forgot to mention too, I'm like, I've been to drag shows since I was 17. Don't tell, because I was not supposed to be in the club at 17. I've been to drag shows for 17 years. 
And they are the most amazing performers. I've learned how to be a better performer through watching drag queens. So I don't understand how you're going to get an even more fabulous story time than that, besides my hermit crab, because this is really amazing. But, <laughs> but I just really appreciate you guys taking the time to hear us. And I really hope that um, all of this love and support for story time has kind of made you change your minds and ideas about what the community does want, because I really feel, you know, people like to hide behind the computer screen, but I didn't see any of that here tonight. But what I did see was support and love for our children, for our children's education, for our children's uh, learning of diversity. So thank you guys. At least some glitter. There you go, thank you. <laughs> well, you, you. I just wanna say that you can definitely read to my son because I've bought like six hermit crabs and they all die. <laughs> So any any time you want to read and educate him on what he needs to do to you, you I'll call you. <laughs> In my classroom, I kept hermit crabs alive. We even made their own food. Okay. So we'll talk after. We'll have to talk. <laughs> it's getting expensive. I commented on your. Wait, no, not. Not me. No, no, no. Someone commented. All right. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. And Mr. Chair, 23 citizens who did not wish to speak signed in to support the Drag Queen story time. One signed in in opposition. And several citizens called the council office. 15 supported the Drag Queen story time, while nine signed, uh, called in opposition to it. Okay. That completes the comments from the public. Are y'all going to stick around for the rest of the meeting? If not, let me know, because y'all are going to make a mad exit, and I'm going to just delay a little bit. And you're welcome to stay. I mean, it would be a great thing. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started with the meeting. We just took a little break. Those that were watching or tuning in just to clear out the audience. Um, Kyle, we good? Okay. All right, at this time, we're going to move to report and our discussion items. Jeremy, can you please read? Sorry, go ahead. Update on the Parish General Fund. Okay, I just... All right. <laughs> Um, can someone wait? It's an update on Paris General Fund. I'm going to chime in. Miss Laurie, can you give us an update? I'm, I'm assuming that's where it's coming from. Yes, or where sir. it's going. Okay. I provided you guys a spreadsheet hot off the press. We closed July yesterday, and um, I've highlighted some variables that will determine how we actually end the year. Sales taxes are unknown, so you know, that's going to be a big determining factor. The subs operating subsidies to the two funds that the parish general fund subsidizes, which is the coroner's fund and the war memorial building, are also two large factors that will determine how the parish general fund ends the fiscal year. And also capital outlay. We are withholding some capital outlay 
dollars because we know that the parish general fund is projected to um, to be very low, if possibly in the negative, um, if we don't do anything with the Buchanan garage, which is also another outstanding item. So at the end of July, we ended the year with $686,000 in fund balance. And then I just made projections for the remaining three months. Um, we're working on the budget right now. You know, we have wrap up coming up and it's very possible that when we end this fiscal year, we will be coming back to you in December or January after the auditors come in and we get an audited fund balance we may have to come back to you with additional reductions in the parish general fund based on what that final audited fund balance is. Okay. Any other discussion items? Any other comments from council? So just looking at this right here, the bottom says a negative 176,000. That is a possibility. That is without the Buchanan garage, the sale of the Buchanan garage, was contemplated in the proposed budget, and that hasn't been acted on, so I didn't want to project that in here. If you do put the Buchanan Garage in here, as was introduced a few weeks ago, then that, would, that number would be positive. Sales taxes in the unincorporated areas is very volatile. It, sales taxes in the unincorporated area has been as low as, 231,000 and as high as 539,000 in, in, in a month, in any month. So it varies so widely that if we can, if we get a pickup in these next two months, it could <coughs> overcome the shortage. It, it's just very volatile. It's okay. not a steady stream. Councilman Cole. You've mentioned the Buchanan Street parking garage several times in your comments tonight. And it was brought to my attention and to the attention of others on the Finance Committee over the weekend that the proposed budget fund balance of $104,000 is predicated on the fact that the City of Lafayette will purchase the Parish of Lafayette parking garage. So you are anticipating two a single occurrence that will impact two separate situations. One, our current budget, where we're reflecting currently uh, negative $176,000. And if that doesn't occur, we may have to find, well, we would have to find $770,000 in the proposed budget because you have included that to reflect the fund balance of $106,000, correct? $104,000. Yes, sir. It is included and identified in a separate line item as such. So my question, I guess, would be Mr. Duyon, because Mr. Robito is taking a break. Uh, when do you, does the administration expect to come to us and submit an ordinance which would call for the purchase of the parking garage by the city of Lafayette, from the parish of Lafayette, which would then allow for the transfer of funds. Uh, but wasn't the, wasn't it put up for intro? The, the it was, and it was, it was pulled. Pulled. So we'll have to put that back on, on the ballot. Because on, it didn't have the accompanying uh, ordinance that actually addressed the sale. You couldn't transfer the money without the ordinance approving the sale. Okay. So my question is, with, we're in August, when will you be coming to us as a council for consideration? As soon as possible. As soon as possible. Well, based on this report, the sooner the better. Yes, yeah, sooner than later. Thank you, sir. All right. That ends all discussion and reports. So we will now move to ordinances for final adoption. Just to remind everyone that item eight has been deferred indefinitely. We will move to ordinance for final adoption, starting with item number nine. Jeremy, can you please read? Ordinance 133, 2018, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending section 18-13 of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government Code of Ordinances to change the minimum distance between licensed bingo halls in the city of Lafayette and to clarify the method of measurement to be employed for such determination. Need a motion and a second. 
Motion by Councilman Bellard, second by Councilman Conk. Any council discussion? Okay. See. Councilman Castillo. Thank you, sir. Mr. Conk, I see you one of the sponsors, and in, in, if I'm not mistaken, in 2005 you were a sponsor in 2005 on that that uh, ordinance too. Can you can you make his mic hot? I'm just kind of curious. Hot, sir. Quite candidly, uh, Mr. Castillo, I don't recall that particular ordinance, and <laughs> well, I'll be. That's it. I don't particularly recall that ordinance. Okay. Your, your name was on it, so I just was kind of curious. You know, what was the reason back then, and now was the reason was the difference in the reasoning? Well, the difference was, today is two tenths of a mile. Uh, the ordinance that's been in place today, from if I can recall correctly, in reading it, is an eight mile separation, and. Uh, the issue was brought to our attention that there is a uh, a potential location for a bingo hall on Johnson Street, which falls within seven and eight tenths miles from uh, the Metro Bingo Hall on uh, Karen Crow on the Evangeline uh, Thruway, and the request was made for consideration of changing that distance because they measured it as a crow flies as opposed to driving distance, and unless we are we all amended this ordinance that particular operation could not get their co there as they need to perform what what it was the intent of their business okay so that, that's that's your reasoning that was my and i will tell you that uh when i was approached initially by the person who wants to operate this business uh, this bingo hall uh, i told him that i didn't have the time to devote the attention to it and he approached several members of the council. Uh, Mr. Bellard did call me. He said, do you mind if I go ahead and, and uh, do the legwork on it and, and proceed with it? I said, no, fine. And he asked if I wished to have my name on it. I said, yeah, no problem. Okay, appreciate that. Can you make Mr. Bellard hot? I see he wants to, wants to talk. Mr. Bellard. Yes, sir. Can you, can you give me, I guess, your reasoning why you want to change this or... or or do away with it, or I don't know what you, what, you're, what you're trying to do with it. Just explain to me what's your reasoning behind it. Very simple. Uh, the, the, biz, the the people approached me because Councilman Conk said he was busy doing other things. I said, well, what's your situation? Oh, sure, I'll entertain anything. He said, basically, I want to open up a bingo hall at Crystal Cottage. The planning and zoning says I can. I said, well, why not? He says, well, there's an ordinance in there that said that's eight miles. I said, well, how far are you? Are you going to open up next door to Metro? He goes, no. I said, I went, pulled it up on the aerial. I said, wow. This don't make any sense. Y'all way far from each other. I said, you're way you're more than eight miles. I mean, I can drive there. I drive the Karen Crow. They said, nope, it's measured as a crow flies. I said, well, that doesn't make any sense to me because there's no way that's going to be in competition with you. It's a city ordinance. I said, let me talk to Councilman Conk. Talk to the administration. They said they didn't have a problem. I talked to planning and zoning director. Didn't know why it was put in. I talked to legal. They didn't know why. And basically, I said, hey, let's roll with it. And that's where we are today. Okay, all right. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I know I've, I was contacted by some by a number of clubs that that participate in the other two uh, bingo facilities. I think there's one in Judy's, the ranch. I think it's called yeah, bingo, the ranch. bingo ranch. The bingo ranch, and then the one on Metro on, on the throughway. Um, and their concerns uh, with the, with the new hall opening up is, you know, they they're gonna lose their crowd to a new facility. Um, and all these schools and, and, and affiliated blind, and they, they, they depend on these fundraisers. So if they're losing half of their crowd to the new facility, it's really going to hurt their, their fundraising. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to support this uh, because of that reason. And I don't know why it was put in eight miles or whatever it was in 2005. Um, I wasn't on the council at that time. It feels like I was. It feels like I've been since 1960. But... Um, I don't know what the reasoning for it, you know, back then, but I do know by opening this third bingo hall, it will dwindle down the crowds at the other two, and then you'll be sharing the crowd you have now with three bingo halls, and it's really going to be detrimental to, to the high schools that use it, uh, the affiliated blind that uses it, and any other uh, organization, nonprofit organization that uses it to raise funds. Um, this has been going on for years. Uh, these two bingo halls have been operating in operation 
And I think just a new hall like that's really going to affect uh, all these all these uh, nonprofits. Yeah, that, that's just how I feel about it. So uh, I'm kind of curious to see what the rest of the council has to say. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Boudreau. Actually, my question is for legal. Um, I understand this ordinance is to accomplish two things. Change the minimum distance, which we've heard conversation on that already, basically go to from eight miles to seven, and then clarify the method of measurement. And I had been told that it was measured by a crow fly as opposed to any other form of measurement. But I have not seen any wording that reflected that. So I just wanted you to identify for me where in the original ordinance did it actually determine the way that this measurement would take place, please? The source, when you look in the Code of Ordinances under, uh, I think it's Chapter 18, uh, businesses, bingo halls, provisions are, are located there. Under those provisions, uh, it identifies a source ordinance, the source ordinance that actually instituted those provisions. That's Ordinance 0178-2005. I think Mr. Councilman Castile referred to the 2005 event uh, of when bingo halls were uh, first um, regulated through the city of Lafayette. When you go to that source ordinance, which is still in effect, even though it's not necessarily published in the Code of Ordinances, you being here as longer than I have, you well know that not all ordinances are published in the, the Muni Code or Code of Ordinances that are available on the Internet. So when you pull that particular or source ordinance, it has the language in there that refers to um, I guess I'll just read it for you. Whereas the Lafayette City Parish Council has expressed concern about the establishment and operation of more than one bingo hall in a particular area of the City of Lafayette, which area the Council has determined shall be defined by or shall be defined as an eight mile radius from another bingo hall already lawfully operating. That particular language that was adopted in that ordinance didn't transfer over into the actual provisions that the ordinance later says we're going to place these particular provisions, Article 2 bingo halls 1811 through 1813, they didn't transfer over the word radius. They just said within eight miles. The source ordinance, though, that adopted those provisions and is in effect clarifies that the intent of that ordinance and the import of that ordinance all along was to be an eight mile radius. The only way you can get an eight mile radius is by as the crow flies. It's a straight line measurement. So unlike the, the other ordinances we've seen in the past about alcohol um, distances of, of establishments, it actually say as a pedestrian walks or, or something like that. This one actually identifies it to be an eight mile radius, which is no, no way you can get there other than a straight line measurement. So it would be safe to say that it was the intent of the council at that time. It was the dictate of the council. It's in right. the ordinance and it's adopted and all of the whereas clauses are adopted as part of the ordinance. Okay. So, and in, in you brought up a, a comparison for me, um, the alcohol ordinance or any ordinance where it right. specifically defines in the way a pedestrian may walk, and in, in the way someone may travel by car, I guess, or the crow flies. And it was funny because somebody called me and said, a crow don't play bingo. <laughs> 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 and, and, and nobody flies to get to the facility. But that's, that's the way we measure in this, and I thought that was kind of humorous at the time. Um, you know, my concern, and based on what I've heard here today, is, you know, I, you go from eight to seven. I don't know what stops you from going from seven to six, to be quite honest with you, under this rationale. Um, um, and, and that could be dangerous. My, my biggest concern, though, is our consistency and how we apply things. And, and 
the first thing that came to mind when I first started looking at this is the last time we had a, a distance type um, discussion. It was related to, to atmosphere and, and education in the, the uh, church facilities. And, you know, it was, it, they're right across the street, but they got to walk to the end of the block. They got to cross here and walk down the block. It's, 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 it's becoming this, how do we make it work? And that concerns me. Um, so my, and I think this, this falls in uh, planning and zoning. This, my, my, my suggestion to planning and zoning as we have a new director at this time is that uh, unrelated to this, I think we ought to start getting consistent in how we measure distances and be, have a consistent means because this could certainly be viewed as cherry picking. But um, I, I, I wanted to hear that the language actually existed and that was the intent of the council as they voted on it at that time. Right. And you gave me that. Thank you very much. Okay. Councilman Bellor. Yeah. Um, as far as the, the cherry picking, I would not have a problem making the amendment to making it 0.5 or 0.01 or doing away with it altogether if this council so chooses. But since this is what we have there on, on the deal, I'm not going to make that amendment. But just to let the council know, if we want to come back and we'd have to go to the previous ordinance that he's talking about, that's the ghost ordinance that's not here, I would be in full support of doing away with any and all radius. I just want the record to show that. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Lewis. Yes, uh, I would have to agree with Mr. Castile uh, because I was approached by the, the people with the deaf and the blind and other patrons, constituents as well. Uh, where I have a problem is that in 2005, it was regulated that the distance requirement would be eight miles. And now we have someone who would like to have it amended or changed, however he wants to put it. And I don't agree with that. These are the rules, these are the laws, and, and like Mr. Boudreaux said, we need to be consistent. This high was in 2005. And I feel that it should remain as is because as far as these are ways these, these uh, people are generating funds. They're not coming to the city council and asking us to help them out. They are on their own. And this is a way of their generating funds. And if another bingo hall is placed, I think they can lose some funding. So I will be supporting Mr. Castile and supporting the the people that's here now and asking us to support them and do not have an additional bingo hall. Okay. Councilman Castile. Thank you, sir. Uh, on another note, uh, uh, we had mentioned, we were kind of talking about this in the back, and um, we mentioned maybe, you know, some of the schools or whatever can switch over to the new hall and that type of situation. Um, yeah, they, they can do that. But again, when you, when, when you split the crowd, uh, the crowd's not that big already, but when you sp split that crowd up because you moved the school over, uh, not everybody's going to follow that school. So that school is going to get less money in, in fundraising dollars by do making that move than staying where they're at. So, you know, I understand business. I got a couple of them. I know how it works. It's just... You know, bingo is not is not just like a normal everyday business. That's something that's strictly nonprofit organizations use to raise their funds. Uh, there's two of them in the parish, um, and, and all the high schools use them. And to me, the third one is really going to be detrimental to all of them. Uh, that's that's you know whether they move or not. You know, you move, you lose half your crowd. You can, that's just that's just a fact of life. So uh, I'm not going to support the ordinance, and I would hope the council would uh, also follow me and not support it. Thank you. Councilman Cole. And Mr. Castillo, I certainly agree with you about the concerns about splitting the bingo audience. But if this ordinance stays in play as it is today, there is nothing that would preclude a bingo hall from operating on Vero School Road, which would put them outside of the eight mile radius. So merely by keeping in place what we have today doesn't prevent or protect the existing bingo halls. This particular business is two-tenths of a mile short. If they had moved their operation to Bay Road School Road, we wouldn't be having this conversation. So I'm, while I empathize, <clears throat> and I agree with what your, your concerns, uh, excuse me, 
<coughs> stated is that this does not prevent another bingo hall from going into operation. They will still be allowed that opportunity. They would just have to do it eight miles past as if you measure it by radius. That can be fixed too. That can be fixed too. You're absolutely correct. Go the other way if you wish. Exactly. Councilman Boudreau. Yeah, is someone from planning here? <clears throat> planning. I, I want to bring in I, uh, Jared when he made that um, last mention. He reminded me of something. And one of the other significant things is the state law as it relates to bingo halls, which is considered gambling facilities. And because I, I was concerned when I contacted planning on this issue, those who were around a while back uh, remember I had made an inquiry about dollar type stores. And um, then I had to get a security detail for about two weeks because people was just, you know, how dare he question, you know, commerce and, and, and we should let things work themselves out. But I had made an inquiry about dollar type stores because there were so many developing and they were so densely populated in districts three and four, and there was so much research and, and all of their stuff on social on um, on, on their websites show their, their their business models about locating in poor communities, and and what they do and how they offer. And, and I think we have about thirty nine or so in the parish of Lafayette, and of that I think probably um, in excess of twenty of them are in districts three and four um, alone. Um, and that's the entire parish of Lafayette. And one of the questions that I ask is that when I brought that issue up, and I hadn't introduced any ordinance at all, but when I brought that issue up, legal and, and planning immediately opinion that you can't regulate, you can't prevent, you can't create zoning to prevent a business from locating. And I was wondering, well, what are we doing here? And then what was discovered and what was shared with me, what I ask be shared now, because I think this is significant in the conversation, especially when we talk about if they, if they locate two-tenths of a mile outside of that, that there is a state statute that speaks to the number of facilities, period. So could you share with us what you shared with me about the state legislation that also kind of drives the local government's position on the establishment of bingo halls, please. Um, I'm Danielle Rowe with Development and Planning. Unfortunately, it wasn't me at the time. Um, okay. So I just need to Somebody know. responded to my email, which wasn't that long ago. From planning? Huh? Yeah. From planning? <laughs> <laughs> the parish, too. Yeah. I will certainly look into that and see. I apologize. Though. It'll be too late after tonight. Uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John, do Paul, you do you remember you assigned that you, you was one of the people who said, "Let me see if I can pull up." Well, I, 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 I sent, sent something to legal into planning at the same time, and you directed it to planning because you said that it would be a question better addressed by them. Um, all I recall, uh, Councilman Boudreau, is that we did provide you with a memo on the constitutional issue. That, I think that was inclusive of that, but there was some some response in there. Um, you know, the um, all of the supporters and opposers emails are dominating the search engine with, <laughs> with bingo halls. But um, yeah, so. I guess that's not going to work, but it, it was very relevant because there's some state there's state law that speaks to the establishment of bingo halls in regulating the number of bingo type facilities within a parish, um, because of the concern of the growth of gambling is is basically what it came back to. I apologize. Oh, that, that's that's Sorry. love. <laughs> there's no there's no perfect person. Well, yeah, it, it may be. If you're referring to uh, Title IV, talks about basically the, the structure of the state statutes, as I recall, is the state simply allows the local governing authority, either, whether that be the parish uh, governing authority and or a municipal uh, municipality's governing authority, they leave it up to them to decide whether or not they wish to allow um, gambling or games of chance being a bingo, kino, 
whatever it may be, raffles, and an, until that local governing authority declares such to be uh, valid or legal in their uh, jurisdiction, uh, that's when the local governing authority then can establish rules and regulations under which those games of chance can operate. In other words, licensing, permitting, rules of that nature, uh, including distance, which would be, uh, you know, the issue of the constitutional issue we discussed with you. I apologize. The, the response didn't come from planning. It came from Beck and Abad, Catherine Curry. Right. That's the constitutional memo that discusses Title IV as well. Right. So, so, so her words was like, unlike restrictions placed on dollar stores, the state of Louisiana has declared a public need to restrict gambling, a distance limitation that controls the number of bingo halls within the city of Lafayette furthers that interest. That was the important words um, that, that was provided to us on, on top of the constitutional, um, I guess, a draft of, of what the uh, Louisiana Constitution state. So I'm, I'm, I'm presenting this in reference to what Mr. Conk's response was to Mr. Castile is that at the end of the day, there's a desire to regulate the number of these, period. Um, even if they go outside of that eight mile radius, they saying using the radius helps that limitation, but getting outside the eight mile won't be a free for all because that's not the desire of the legislation. And, and more so that yeah, no. there is, that, yeah, you, more so that there is a desire to limit those numbers um, regardless of distance. In other words, they don't want one on every corner. <laughs> they don't want, and that, that was the thing when Mr. Bellard said, you know, he would support a zero distance. Uh, I totally respect that because I understand how he does those things. He, he, you know, he likes the kind of like the free world, but at the end of the day, um, that's not the spirit of what the state is, is designed in certainly local government. So, you know, the, these things were put in place for a reason, um, and, and amending them, that, that's certainly an option, a very viable option. But like always, what do you do when the next one comes? So, thank you. Okay. Not seeing other, any other council discussion, any public comment? Yes, sir. We did have um, 14 citizens who signed in, did not wish to speak, but opposed the ordinance. Uh, five signed in to support the ordinance, but did not wish to speak. We do have three speakers who signed in, the first of which is Gertie Bias. She will be followed by Lynn Blanchard. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Mayor, President of the Lafayette Parish Council, members, Lafayette Parish government, excuse me, members of the council. Hope is a beautiful thing. My name is Gertie Bias and I am a member of Kenneth Boudreaux's district. I am the current president of Affiliated Blind of Louisiana Incorporated, which is an organization founded to educate the public about individuals who are blind, deaf blind, visually impaired, serve as mentors, and also support the training center located at 409 West St. Mary Boulevard. I had high hopes for a bright future once I received my master's degree and returned to the state of Louisiana. My hopes began to fade, though when my sight failed, I felt as if I was soaring like an eagle when I heard the news about my sight loss. But thanks to Affiliated Blind of Louisiana Training Center, I made my, up my mind to attend rehab where I increased my daily living skills. My confidence increased. I became more integrated into the community. And yes, I re-entered the employment force. There are others waiting in the wing. My hope has been restored, but they're feeling hopeless. They don't have the confidence that I have now. Will you please remember that when you make your vote? 
please vote against Ordinance 133. Thank you so much for listening to me. Have a good evening. Two. Thank you. Mr. Lynn Blanchard, followed by, is that Dove? I'm going to let them say the last name. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for allowing us this opportunity to speak and talk. And I'd just like to start by saying, well, for, first of all, my name is Lynn Blanchard. I'm the executive director of the affiliated Blount of Louisiana's training center, which is right around the corner from, from this uh, facility we're in right now. Uh, I would just start by saying that uh, when making any decision about any topic, I would think that you would want to gather as much information as possible, especially if you're not sure why something existed or what was going on. As it, as it relates to bingo, there are two major bingo halls in the community, so I would pick up the phone and talk to someone at a bingo hall, you know, because we certainly have insight on why those ordinances were passed uh, in 2005. Um, that being said, um, let me just read a few statements and then I'll try to wing it from there. The Bingo Ranch has been operating for almost 30 years. I think the Bingo Ranch was actually in operation before Metro started. Uh, we would not have the training center that we have if it weren't for Bingo. This is why Bingo is so important to us. Mr. John Lemaire fought very hard getting the bingo started when it was the parish council. The training center is an integral part of the community and has been here serving it and the state since the early 90s. And we're also serving constituents in each and every one of your districts. So bingo is extremely important. 100% of all proceeds go to the services for the blind, the visually impaired, and the deafblind. Anything to do with bingo, I would find it hard to believe that the bingo ranch would not be included in that conversation. I heard some statements made earlier, um, and I certainly understand if you're not familiar with bingo, when you're looking at an ordinance in eight miles and looking at another business one to start and thinking, well, that certainly is not going to impact that other, that other bingo hall. But the fact is that the distance between Metro and the bingo ranch is approximately 17 miles. And everything we do affects Metro, and everything Metro does affects us. So when you put that third uh, parlor somewhere in the middle, it's going to impact both halls, and it's going to impact the, the business that's trying to start as well. Unless they have a great, great deal of money that they can lose, and unless they've you know, done their research, which I'm, I'm sure they have, but nobody talked to us, you know, who was actually in the business. When the smoking ordinance was passed last August, I know that the Bingo Ranch, as an example, took a hit of almost $200,000 in donations for the training center. $200,000 with that one ordinance had a major impact on the Bingo Hall. And I'm sure folks from Metro can say the impact they've had as well. Charities are, are slowly dropping out. So this is not just about a business trying to open up. That's the difference. This is about charities. If you have a commercial hall open, their objective is to collect rent. The, person, the people that are going to hurt are the charities if they can't continue to maintain that rent as the crowds thin out. So there's a lot more to it than what you guys may may know. And we would be more than happy to talk in each and every one of you and explain how all of that works. That being said, too, I want to thank every one of you who returned our emails, <clears throat> returned our phone calls. We're here. We're here for the community. I would invite every one of y'all to come see the training center and everyone to come play bingo. So if you have any questions, I really would not mind if it's over my time answering some of those things that y'all were talking about back and forth. Okay. Not seeing any. Thank you. Final speaker, and I'm going to try this, Dove Aspa. Aspa? A-L-S-P-A-U-G-H. Yes, uh, my name is Doug Aspa. Uh, 
Thank you guys for letting me speak here tonight. Uh, I'd like to voice my uh, support for this ordinance uh, of bingo. I am a resident of District 7, Ms. Nanette Cook. Uh, just so you know, this hall would help support many nonprofits in Acadiana other than our own, and we invite any other nonprofits to come and hold a session should this vote be yes. We've, had, we've even attended these other halls. We've supported other nonprofits. Our intent is not to decrease the amount of people or patrons they have. Ours to, is to grow ours. We have other nonprofits. They have their own nonprofits. I don't know how we can place an importance on nonprofits. They're all good. None are bad. For example, I have Jaden Miller here with me tonight. He is a hockey player that one of the reasons we are trying to do this. Uh, I am the president of LAHA, which is a Lafayette Amateur Hockey Association. We established it in 1998 for youth hockey players. With the economy, it has been it has seen our numbers decrease greatly and other variables are included, but the biggest deterrent right now is the fees. Uh, it's very expensive for our players to each participate, and by doing some of this, this would offset some cost and allow him to participate and many others like him. Therefore, uh, a few years ago, we set out on a quest on what we can do to alleviate some of the costs for parents, and then we discovered bingo. Yes, we have went to the state and we are fully we have passed all the tests. The last thing we have left to do is submit an address. And that is when we ran into this ordinance issue. Uh, we also thought, what better place to have families attend together and raise money for youth players? However, the ordinance as written now prevents us from opening up a bingo hall, even though the next closest bingo hall within the city limits is 10 miles away. Yes, I know you guys discuss as a crow flies, but driving distance is, is a little larger, uh, little more. As we begin looking into this, we found out that we are not the only nonprofit organization that is affected by this ordinance. There are many other local organizations that would like to join us, and we would like you to vote yes in support of this amendment tonight and allow us to have a place of bingo. I thank you for your time tonight, people. Speakers. That was the final speaker. And I just want to recognize the signer. She has been signing for three and a half hours. Wow. <laughs> uh, Councilman Call. Mr. Escott, I was reading the uh, state statute. And there is nothing in there that uh, addresses the number of bingo halls, nor does it address radius. So we're not committed by state law, if I interpret it correctly, That's or correct. if I read it correctly. That's correct. Having said that, I'm going to maintain my stance on this ordinance as introduced with Mr. Bellard. But I would go further, and I would ask you, is it legal? First of all, this ordinance only applies to the city of Lafayette, correct? That's correct. Can we come back? And I realize that if this passes, and I have no clue if it's going to pass or not, but if this passes, this proposed business would be allowed to open. But could we not come back and then pass an ordinance that would limit the number of bingo halls to whatever is in operation at that time? If this passes, there would be three. If this doesn't pass, there would be two. Can we do that and make it the city of Lafayette and the parish? Okay, now you just complicated the question. <laughs> uh, He's wait, let, let, let me break that down. Let me, let me break that down. So the first question is, could the city of Lafayette, through its governing authority, limit the number of bingo halls within the city of Lafayette? The answer is likely yes. That would be a similar restriction, in, a reasonable restriction in terms of your ability to control that particular uh, ev uh, gaming operation. Um, you also could likely limit the number in the parish as the governing authority of the parish of Lafayette as well. Now, how the logistics of that would work, I, you know, I'm not sure. I'm, I, I, I'm not sure what you're thinking, but um, I think that could be a legitimate regulation. If you, if, you can, uh, if you can limit distance or regulate distance, I can't imagine you couldn't regulate number. 
we did successfully pass a non-smoking ordinance which impacts all of the parish other than the other municipalities, correct? So we, we have that opportunity to do that. So oh, I, don't, don't mistake what I'm saying. You, I, I am in no way implying that this council doesn't have the power as the governing authority of the parish of Lafayette to do that. You, you certainly do. Uh, I was simply breaking down your question into two different answers because you currently have an ordinance that deals with regulating bingo within the city of Lafayette and likewise you also have separate ordinances that were passed by the parish council prior to consolidation that deal with those those gaming operations in the parish thank you sir councilman Boudreau. yes since this regulates the city of Lafayette only should individuals on this council who do not live in the city be allowed to vote on this? Oh, no. <laughs> I thought you want to go home, man. I'm just asking. I thought you want to go home. <laughs> because Mr. Kunk brings up a good point about the, the, the parish right now. <laughs> No, the smoking ordinance was for the city and the unincorporated area, so that was inclusive of everybody. But if this is a city of Lafayette ordinance, or, or for William's sake, should it go before LPUA? <laughs> I'm a little more city member, not a member of the LPUA. Yeah. I was just asking. I mean, <laughs> all right, you, you done? We, it's important that we get all questions <laughs> asked and answered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> And one follow-up, Mr. Chair, we did have several citizens who called in, 10 called in to the council office, all in opposition to the ordinance. Okay. All right. Finish council discussion, finish public comment, call for the vote. District 1? No. District 2? No. District 3? No. District 4? No. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Ordinance 134, 2018, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the Unified Development Code and the official map of the City of Lafayette, providing for the annexation of additional land into the corporate limits of the City of Lafayette, Louisiana, case number ZON 2018-2, 2932 Ambassador Caffrey Parkway annexation located generally north of West Bonaire Drive, west of Ambassador Caffrey Parkway, and south of West Congress Street, and assigning a zoning classification of commercial mixed. A motion by Councilman Castillo, second by Councilman Conk. Not seeing any council discussion, any public comment? Yes, sir. Okay. Call vote. District 2? Yes. District 3? District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Ordinance 135, 2018, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the Unified Development Code so as to reclassify the property of Newville Dominique Developments, LLC, case number ZON 2018-16, 219 and 221, Wilkie Street rezoning located generally east of Wilkie Street, north of Rayburn Street, and south of Ella Street, the particular parcel being rezoned from RM1 residential mixed to RM2 residential mixed. Motion by Councilman Cole, second by Councilman Boudreaux. Not seeing any council discussion, any public comment? Yes, sir. Call a roll. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Okay. Item number 12 has been deferred till September 18th. We will now move to ordinance uh, item number 13. Ordinance 137, 2018, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the Unified <laughs> Development Code and the official map of the City of Lafayette providing for the annexation of additional land into the corporate limits of the City of Lafayette, Louisiana, case number ZON 2018-18, 109 Porter Lane annexation located generally north of Carmel Drive, 
east of Louisiana Avenue and south of East Willow Street and assigning a zoning classification of residential single family. Need a motion and a second? Motion by Castillo, second by Mr. Lewis. Not any uh, council discussion, Mr. Terrio. Just real quick, Mr. Conk, just I uh, know you were talking about some of the parish issues, but um, just to bring it up to the public here, number 10 and number 13, we're annexing unincorporated property here, so into the city of Lafayette. Just thought I would bring that to everyone's attention. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, Mr. Uh, Escott, can we uh, amend it to where they got a split? With just a business right here? I want that revenue share. No, 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 it's coming, but I, I, I might make a motion tonight. I can't make the motion, but is it for business or this is residential home? Residential. The previous was business? Yes, the one on the chairman, I would like to go back now. No, 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 mm -hmm. All right. That's all I have. Okay. Point well taken. Uh, legal, as you know, I'm requesting that we address that as soon as possible in, in regards to... Uh, making sure that in the future, any businesses annexed, whether it's the city of Lafayette or any other town, they come to the, this council as it exists, shared revenue. Okay? Thank yes, you. sir. Mr. Cole. Point of clarification, there is no existing business today on that previously uh, approved ordinance. Oh no, it is planned, it's coming. It's planned, but it's not in place today which I think we need, and look, I agree with you, it's done in St. Martin Parish, okay. Grove Bridge, right. but if, if we do it, we need to make it applicable not only to the city of Lafayette, yeah. but the other municipalities. Everyone, everyone all across municipalities the board. across yes. the board, it needs to be Just want to clarify to that, not just the city of Lafayette. Absolutely. Everyone needs to share. That's it. Les le bon temps roulé. You ever heard that before? All right, now. Okay. This teacher has to give some lessons here, so she's trying to wrap me up here. Woo! All right. I ain't seen anything. No public comment? I'm not seeing anything. I'm sorry. The teacher just clarified for me. Correct. Thank you, Mr. Uh, teacher Bellard. <laughs> Please call the vote. District 4? District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? No. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Ordinance 138, 2018, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the fiscal year 1718 capital budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by increasing anticipated revenues in the amount of $290,137 from the Federal Transit Administration Section 5339 Bus and Bus Facilities Grant along with the required match in the amount of $51,201 for federal fiscal year 2018 for use within the Public Works Department Transit Division. Need a motion to second? Motion by Castile, second by? Second. We're gonna go with Councilwoman Liz. A bear. She spoke up tonight. Awesome. She's the, the second person on that. Any council discussion? Seeing none. Any public comment? Call the roll, please. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Motion to adopt is approved. Ordinance 139, 2018, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the fiscal year 1718 capital budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by increasing anticipated revenues in the amount of $908,744 from the Federal Transit Administration Section 5307 Urbanized Area Formula Grant along with the required match in the amount of $211,745 for use within the Public Works Department Transit Division. Motion by Castile. Second by Councilman Kong. Any public comment? Yes, sir. All right. Please call for the vote. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 5? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. 
Ordinance 141, 2018, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council consolidating and merging precincts as authorized and in accordance with the applicable provisions of the Louisiana Election Code, Louisiana Revised Statute 18.532 at SEC. Okay. Need a motion and a second? Motion by Castillo. Second. Second by Councilwoman Annette Cook. Not seeing any council discussion. Um, Councilman uh, Pat Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Charlene, can you come up and explain the, the merger of these precincts? I've been wanting to say this, constituent of District 1. <laughs> I really appreciate that, District 1 representative. You sat here all night for this <laughs> item. <laughs> yes. you know, just like the lady who was giving the hand signals, I appreciate you sitting back there. Hi. That's it. Charlene, Minority Registrar of Voters. What happens is um, we do a canvas annually of the voters. Any precinct under 300 registered voters or over 2,200 registered voters, we have to take care of or the parish has to fund it 100% on election day. So what we did is for precinct 50, we were under 300. It was like, I want to say maybe 239, something like this. So what we did, all the districts matched 100%. So we combined it with precinct 51. Both precincts already voted at Martin Luther King Recreational Center. So what's going to happen is going to just be one book instead of two books. They still vote at the same place. So they will continue voting at the same place? Yes, sir. Okay. okay, well, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I seeing any other discussion. Any public comment? Okay, call for the vote. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Okay, now we'll move to appeals. We'll ask Germany to please read. Appeal of, appeal of Planning Commission Action, Village of River Ranch, Phase 2, Lot C76A, PC 2018-28. Got a motion by Councilwoman Liz Hebert and a second by... Councilman Lewis. Any uh, council discussion? Is it? What are they voting? Yeah. To, is it to grant the appeal or he's like going yes, to clarify? Yes, grants the appeal. Yeah, he's going to clarify. Well, well, I need some clarification. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on. Is your motion, what is your motion? To 